On last night's live stream, I alluded to an observation by Dr. John D. In this video, I will detail the most significant parts of the video and discuss the implications of them. Dr. John's video titled The Black Swan, an observation and its implications for a globe model, will be broken down into three sections. First, the observation footage, second, the distance data, and third, the noted black swan element and the incredible distances involved that should have every globe asking themselves, have they been lied to? A link to the original video will be in the description below. In case you do not know who Dr. John is, he is an active researcher who conducts most of his observations in and around Worthing in the south of England. He has produced some amazing work and as this video will show, he is breaking all known records for flat earth long distance photography from sea level. I highly recommend you subscribe to his channel. Now to the observation. It took place around 7.15pm on the 6th of August 2020 down on the beach in Worthing. The exact location is listed in the description below. There were two observer heights from two videos. The first at 2 feet and the second at 3.5 feet above actual sea level right by the water's edge. It is the second observation at 3.5 feet that we shall be looking at. As you can see, the location is very wet and soggy, but as a flat earth researcher myself, we are used to getting wet and filthy in the line of duty. Once you get a taste for the observation, you won't let a little seawater stop you from going above and beyond for the data. So here he is zooming in to the wind turbines and to the left we quite clearly see some land. There is more land also visible, however, we shall just concentrate on this section of video right here. Now we have all the data needed to ascertain a location for the distant land. An observer position, a known structure, which is the turbines to triangulate a heading, and lastly, the land that we see. All we need to do is place the wind turbines in their exact spot, and we are good to go. Luckily, the data for these turbines is quite easy to find, and with a few minutes work, we can plot them onto Google Earth. Taking a line of sight east, 0.07 degrees past turbine I01 of the Rampion offshore wind turbines, we can first see the edge of the land in the video. A further 0.2 degrees east, and we see the left edge of the land seen in the image. Remember too that there is more land further east, but we will just for now concentrate on these locations. So now we have the land sorted and the turbines plotted, let's do some maths. The distance to turbine I01 is 13.83 kilometers. And the distance to turbine O07, which is the turbine to the right of the image, is 18.58 kilometers. In the video and the enhanced photo, we can clearly see that the horizon is beyond both of these turbines. Note, the horizon is not the edge of a sphere. It is simply an optical position where the ground or sea appears to meet the sky. The horizon is not a defined position and nobody can travel to it. However, the globe math needs a mathematical distance to this place and in their model, it is a fixed position with a fixed distance based on an observer height. So let's calculate what the geometric horizon should be on a globe. The observer height is 3.5 feet. 
which, when put into a Earth curve calculator, we get a distance of 2.29 miles. This means that everything beyond this 2.29 miles will be incrementally obscured from the bottom, due to the fact it will be behind the curvature of Earth. For instance, if there was a boat at 4 miles away, then the bottom of the boat should be hidden by 1.95 feet. A relatively small amount, but remember the curve is not linear, it is squared. And as such, the further away something is, the greater the hidden value. To emphasise this, if we put a boat just two more miles away, so at six miles instead of four, we get a hidden value of 9.17 feet. Let's push that back again another two miles, so to eight miles total, and we get 21.73 feet of hidden, close to the height of a small house. The point here is that everything beyond 2.29 miles should be hidden if the geometric horizon is the actual edge of a sphere. What is clear in this evidence is that the horizon is not in front of the turbines. In fact, it is well beyond even the furthest turbines. You cannot have this on a geometric globe of 6,371 kilometers in radius. This type of observation has been nicknamed a black swan. One thing that is evident in these observations is a lack of energy input into the water. It is well known that swell, tide and wind can all affect the motion of the water. But if you get the right conditions, where there is little wind to create the waves, where there is little swell to create the rolling deck of water, and lastly, little tide effects filming at a dead tide, then you can seemingly capture these long distance images quite often. Of course, <laughs> there are other factors too, but in general, a flat earther will tell you water finds its level and only the input of energy into a body of water will change that and create a not so flat water to look across. Dr. John Dee filmed in these pristine conditions and in doing so pushed the horizon back so far that even the distant land of France was captured. Saint Adresse and Le Havre are the two nearest locations in the observation and the distance to these is quite incredible. 149 kilometers, yes, 149 kilometers from an observer height of just 3.5 feet. Now, the highest elevation in these locations is a poultry, 110 meters. Now, I'm not claiming to be able to identify this land as being what is seen, as it is equally possible that the land seen is further away still. It could be La Croix Sonnet at a distance of 164 kilometers and with an elevation of just 144 meters. It could also be Cizé Saint Aubin, 231 kilometers away, with an elevation of 330 meters. I guess you could take your pick, but it is one of these three locations. So for ease of the argument, I will concentrate on the least destructive to the globe model. From an observer height of 3.5 feet and looking at Le Havre, there should be 1.66 kilometers of geometric hidden or in meters, that would be 1,660 meters. The highest part of Le Havre is just 110 meters. This means that Le Havre is 1,550 meters, or close to a mile, behind the curve. In other words, we should not be able to see it. The physical edge of the globe would cut off the direct line of sight to it. In fact, you could put the Eiffel Tower and the Empire State Building on top of one another in Le Havre and there would still be half a mile of hidden curvature so you would not see them. That is of course if we lived on a globe. It makes far greater sense to understand that we just see this far on a good day with great visibility and the sea state as described earlier than to believe that what we are seeing here is a mirage. And what you're seeing here is a mirage, is a mirage, is a mirage. Because everything in this image and footage shows us a defined horizon behind the turbines. And this is simply impossible on a globe. This is for me perhaps the single most important footage for Flat Earth that I have ever seen. Don't let the pseudo-scientists tell you that this is a looming, refraction-laden image. It is not. I do not see any refraction or bendy wonky bits in this footage. All this is, is a great observation that shows, beyond any shadow of a doubt, that the black swan rides again and the geometric horizon dies again. Take care, Ranty signing out.